Hey everyone, welcome back to an episode of Prime News. Uh, we have a lot of stories for you, eight in particular. Hopefully some fresh editing and new formatting for you guys as well. To enjoy, there will be chapters and, and, and timestamps down in the description for each of these stories. We also have a couple giveaways going on that you can check out as well down in the description, including some uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe Action, two copies of that, giving away some next-gen systems. Uh, also, hey, look, you know, I know it's a little early, but there's a lot of demand for Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, so we have some stuff going on for that as well. Oh boy, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty hyped actually to be back doing a, a really highly edited video like this because it's been a while, but uh, let's go. All right, our first story actually deals with Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Uh, yeah, there's a demo. You can play it for free. The saves will transfer over. There's no reason not to play it if you're planning to pick up the game or you just want to try out a Pikmin experience. However, there's a glitch now actually in the game that allows you to actually play the second boss uh, and experience some of the second level in the game as well. So a person 13 on YouTube put this up uh, and showed off the glitches necessary to get there. It's kind of a little bit tedious. Then you can face off against Venomoth Fosbat. Uh, and yeah, once you beat it, it actually unlocks a story mission a side mission but if you try to load that side mission well the game crashes likely because there's missing game files uh maybe this will actually work better when the full game is out however you should just play the full game at that point you won't need a glitch to get into the rest of it uh it's not surprising to see leftover data in a demo a lot of demos of games are literally just vertical slices taken out of the actual game and there'll be leftover game code for other areas it is kind of cool that you can kind of glitch it out and play that new boss obviously we don't know if this affects anything moving into save transferring into the full game but hey it's something that's happening it's kind of neat uh if you want to experience a little bit more pikmin 3 deluxe and you don't want to wait or I mean, you could just go get a Wii U and pick up Pikmin 3 because it's mostly the same game. Uh, but hey, you know what? It's kind of neat, and uh, I'm just looking, really looking forward to this game. NBA 2K21 has decided to add non-skippable ads into the experience when games are loading. Now, there's some interesting aspects about these non-skippable ads. They don't last longer than the duration to load a game, at least so far on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. So they don't technically impact gameplay per se uh but they aren't skippable and usually during this time when you're loading up games you have the ability to edit your lineups and change you know who you want in your starting rotation and all that jazz uh but while the ad's playing, you can't do that. In fact, you won't be able to do it until the ad is over. Uh, this is going to be very disconcerting for some players who obviously spent $60 for a game to not necessarily have these free-to-play style between-game ads. Uh, in addition to that, and that's controversial on its own to slip these ads in after launch because obviously they got them in after reviews went out. Mm, kind of shady there. Uh, but is this going to affect next-gen? Because on... You know, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, presumably there's not going to be much load time, if any, uh, to get into a game. So are we going to have to wait now to play the game until these ads play? There has been no comment made by 2K at this time. Uh, obviously, I am on the side of consumers here where this is extremely shady, extremely dumb. It's definitely playing with review scores. And anyone that's going to include something that might negatively impact review scores by releasing it after the game comes out is viewed in a negative light. And some people are going to say, until we stop buying these games, these practices aren't going to change. This doesn't change the fact that NBA 2K1 is still... 2k21 i should say is still the best nba game on the market and still generally considered a really good game from a gameplay perspective i don't know why 2k is doing this other than they just want to make as much money as possible we've seen them do this with other properties they're in control of as well ea is attempting to do similar things we saw it with ufc game where they slept slipped in ads uh in general if the ads are unobtrusive i don't mind and while this is trying to insert them in an unobtrusive way it also affects something that we've previously been able to do with editing lineups so i don't like it i feel like if they're going to include ads they could have did a different way uh that doesn't hurt things maybe taking over some of the encore advertising that happens uh you know on the sidelines or something like that would have been a better way to deal with it which doesn't affect gameplay and actually is kind of realistic because those ads already exist in real life but what do I know? Ring Fit Adventure has officially outsold Breath of the Wild in Japan. Well, 
Sort of. I mean, it has if you look at the sales charts where Ring Fit Adventure is at 1,668,000 units after last week where it was at number three on the charts. Breath of the Wild actually fell outside of the top 10, but then we got an update later on the total sales for that, which is hit 1,662,000. Kind of crazy to consider that Ring Fit Adventure in Japan is more popular than Breath of the Wild. But Ring Fit Adventure is only available physically because obviously you need the ring and you need the, the little strap that goes on your leg or arm. Okay, so whatever, like it's only available physically, whereas Breath of the Wild is available digitally. And sales in Japan on these sales charts do not include digital sales, which are not tracked from Switch. So Breath of the Wild is very likely still significantly 500, 600, 700,000 ahead of Ring Fit Adventure. However, is it possible because Ring Fit Adventure physically keeps out selling Breath of the Wild physically uh, week over week that it could pass Breath of the Wild's total sales someday? Absolutely. And Ring Fit Adventure is just a game that keeps selling out in Japan as many copies as they can make. Uh, it's also been selling out pretty much worldwide this entire pandemic. I think a lot of people are looking, looking for additional ways to work out in the home. Uh, it does provide a decent workout. I, you know, If you're looking for calorie burn, it's not the best at calorie burning, but it is decent at, at kind of boosting your metabolism, toning down a little bit. Uh, it's something I hope to get into uh, just to increase my daily activity. Heck, I could even do live streams doing it uh, with you guys, which I know might look ridiculous and I might look you know disgusting to some people as someone who's overweight working out on stream, but you know what? I think it would could be fun, and I could get some encouragement from some of you guys uh, to push me further and further and further in my fitness and weight loss goals. Uh, Ring Fit Adventure is definitely something I'm going to be attempting to pick up before the end of the year. It's really hard because I have a lot of money dedicated to the next-gen stuff coming, Age of Calamity and giveaways, but I'll find a way. When there's a will, there's a way, and I have a will. So I will find a way. Valve and Microsoft might be partnering up. This is kind of a speculative rumor out there as Jeff Keighley posted up a tweet featuring a image of what it looks like, a, I believe a Zoom call uh, between him, uh, Phil Spencer, Gabe Newell and others. Gabe Newell obviously being the person who runs Valve. So Phil Spencer being in charge of Microsoft's Xbox division. And obviously we know that Microsoft recently bought up Bethesda and, and you know ZeniMax and, and I, ID software and a whole bunch of studios uh even dating back into last year and the year before okay cool so it's like oh my god is microsoft buying valve well no what actually furthers this rumor into some sort of partnership is the idea that xbox's social media manager uh responded to this with what with one of those memes where uh you're kind of like peeking in on a meeting or something like that and then obviously uh valve had their side of things going as well with valve news network's creator uh retweeted it and saying incoming so something's happening if i had to guess there's going to be a partnership like most partnerships kind of like with ea where valve and microsoft are going to team up to really boost game pass now i expect if valve's games are coming to game pass that it's going to be more of a console slash android exclusive thing so i've heard a lot of people talk about how uh, if you want to get into Game Pass, there's no point if you own a PC because, hey, you can just get all the games on PC. But if you actually check out Game Pass on PC versus Game Pass on Xbox, you'll note there's actually a significant amount of games that aren't available on Game Pass on PC. And you might wonder, why is that? Well, one, the games might not be on PC, but even for those games that are on PC, they have such good sales through other methods like Steam or maybe even through, uh, you know, the blizzard application or battle.net what it used to be called or maybe you know through epic game store or whatever like that where they don't want it included in game pass on pc through these partnerships uh so because of that it actually leads to the best deal for game pass being whether you're on on you know android or on uh, you know, Xbox, you might be like, how does it work on Android? Well, obviously it works through xCloud. You have to be, you know, one of the xCloud beta users to take advantage of it there. But still, it's very, very interesting to see this potentially come up because again, Valve has a massive presence on PC with Steam. I don't see any way that they're going to take their game from Steam and just say, hey, go get Game Pass. Like that's, that's a, Steam's taking massive losses on that and, and Valve and everything. They're not going to do that. But Teaming up for consoles could make sense, uh, especially since Microsoft is shown a big willingness to lose a lot of money uh, to make Game Pass basically the Netflix of games. Uh, and to do that by taking that loss, hoping to gain it on the back end by getting, you know, maybe hundreds of millions of subscribers. I know I will be subscribing to Game Pass the moment the Xbox Series X lands in my house uh, because, hey, look, as I said, 
just because you own a PC doesn't make these Xbox systems irrelevant because if you're going to take advantage of the greatest uh, you know, value in gaming and Game Pass, you really, really need to get your hands on an Xbox. It doesn't even have to be a current one. It can be an old-gen one because everything's cross-gen for a while. But still, I'm really excited about this. After the EA partnership, uh, we have uh, some more Game Pass news coming later in uh, this video. So it just... Microsoft is continuing to really compel people to come over to the platform, if nothing else, because you get a wide breadth of AAA games for relatively cheap. And that's huge in a landscape where gaming is becoming more expensive than it's ever been. All right, folks, this next story is a bit of a doozy when it comes to Pokemon Sword and Shield because we obviously know the Crown Tundra is arriving literally in three days. And with that DLC coming comes a whole bunch of new content, including legendaries. And apparently there's a 100% catch rate on legendaries in this. I know some people are going to love that idea. Some are going to hate it. But let's get into the exact details that have come out from a show that happened in Japan. So the show that happened in Japan uh, is known as uh, Ponkenchi or whatever. Or Ponkenchi. I, I don't know how to pronounce that exactly. Uh... And in that episode, it said that uh, to get a legendary Pokemon, you have to face off against three Dynamax Pokemon, or Dynamax, sorry, Pokemon beforehand. Uh, from where you start after defeating it, you then have a choice of which way to go. Um, all that jazz. Uh, PP and HP lost is continued onwards throughout this. Uh, you can find characters and berries on the paths that can heal. Uh, and you get a guaranteed capture of a legendary Pokemon you face, but can you can only really capture one. Of course, the more details do need to be known about how this happens. Because, see, does this mean we can only do this one time and are locked out from catching other legendaries? Or are you locked out from simply catching a second of the same type of legendary, but you can catch the other legendaries in the wild? Obviously, details of this as of now, you know, there's, there's no answer to this. The DLC does come out this week, so we won't really have to wait long to find out. But still, this is something that I know a lot of Pokemon fans are uh, either excited for or concerned about. And, you know, it is what it is. I still need to dabble into the original games, let alone the DLC. So my opinions on this are kind of a wait and see because I need to play the games first. So Square Enix is reportedly struggling mightily with game development during COVID-19, and potentially this might mean Bravely Default 2 isn't coming out this year, even though it still is dated for this year. It could be December. Obviously, we could get a drop any time. Uh, but, you know, things aren't looking good. And here is what their uh, chief executive had to say. So this comes from Yosoki Matsuda, and he said this to Financial Times. There is also considerable impact on the production side. It will resonate in the future. What we are selling now may have provided some positive aspects, but on the negative side, time has stood still in terms of production. We couldn't develop anything. That is where the impact will come. So yeah, this could obviously naturally have a massive impact on Bravely Default as it was trying to come to the finish line. And hey, look, I know Final Fantasy 16 was announced as an exclusive to PlayStation 5, but is it possible that footage is actually from earlier this year, like way earlier this year, or last year? Uh, Square Enix definitely is, is openly admitting that we basically stopped making games for most of this year. Uh, maybe they're back to making them now. I have no idea what, the, what, what timetable was in there where they basically stopped. Uh, but yeah, this is obviously something that is maybe true across Japan as we have seen a lower than expected output from Japanese uh, publishers and developers despite the fact that they seem to have a pretty good, um, I guess, uh, containment plan in place for COVID-19. Reality is that uh, part of that containment plan is like a zero risk policy, which has led to not only people working at home, but sometimes development just stopping entirely, I guess, in the case of Square Enix. So we'll have to wait and see how this impacts their future releases. Obviously, this puts some doubt in the Final Fantasy 16 arriving next year. Uh, Bravely Default 2 being a game that was slated for this year likely could be an early or summer release next year. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns. We're living in a very great unknown universe here. So uh, we'll have to just hold on to our britches and hope for the best. Rainbow Six Siege is coming to Game Pass this week. It was kind of speculated and rumored before, officially announced by Xbox. Uh, yeah, it's coming. It's cool. It comes this week on the 22nd. Rainbow Six Siege actually had a very tepid reception at launch back in 2015, but due to several different updates and, and creating kind of some esports stuff around it and trickling out content, kind of like Fortnite and Splatoon and other games like that do, it ended up becoming a game that became massively successful. It has sold over 60 
60 million units between PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. So it is definitely a big success. Uh, and now it is going to be coming to Game Pass. And yes, it's already been announced. It'll be compatible and you'll be able to transfer all your save data over to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X slash S. So this is great, great news for people that are really into this. Also, if you've never tried Rainbow Six, this is a great way to get into it. I know I have never played Rainbow Six Siege myself, so I'll probably give it a try on Game Pass when my X slash S arrives next month. Yes, I'm getting both systems. I know I'm crazy. Also getting a PlayStation 5. No bias here. I'm just not going to get the all digital and the and you know the, the disc version because they're the same system just one with the disc drive one without makes no sense i might as well just get the one with the disc drive and call it good anyways uh i'm excited to play rainbow six uh siege here on xbox soon uh this is good news uh and it's just again adding to that never ending value it seems to be that game pass is becoming the outer worlds is getting a patch on switch this week on October 22nd, kind of an interesting day. A lot of stuff happening on October 22nd. And they announced it's going to be a visual enhancement patch. And they released an image kind of comparing a couple screenshots uh, between before the patch and after the patch on Switch. There's a lot of people obviously wondering what else is included in this update. Are we going to get frame rate increases? Are we going to get resolution increases? Uh, you know, depth of field increases? Are we going to see more foliage on the ground? Are we going to see some grass textures coming in besides the flat ones that we've been seeing? We know the system can handle it. Hello? Breath of the Wild with all of its walkthrough grass and plenty of other games as well. So there's a lot of things to consider here that the Outer Worlds needs to do as it is one of the considered to be one of the most disappointing ports to Switch. Now, if you've never played the game on any other platform and you play it on Switch, I find that it's actually an okay experience, just not nearly as great as it is on other systems. There's a lot of performance issues, um, and there's just aspects of the game that look really, really bad that doesn't make sense. At least to me as a gamer, when I've seen other games like The Witcher 3 come to Switch, they have a lot more going on in different scenes and looks better, even sometimes at a better frame rate and resolution. Uh, so there's, it kind of felt like the port job of The Outer Worlds was kind of shoddily done, maybe even rushed, uh, or done by a studio that just has no experience working on Switch. What's nice to see is the company isn't abandoning the Switch version as it is, and they are continuing to work on patches specifically for it. This is good news, as hopefully the game becomes more and more playable. Also, uh, I'm sorry, also I want to note that the 22nd actually wasn't the patch date, sorry. The 22nd is actually when they're having a sale of the game on Switch, hoping to get people back into it, the patch to come shortly after. So stay tuned because I'm really, really excited. They said they're going to have more details on the exact um, you know, differences uh, with this patch in the original game. I'm hoping they touch on the performance a little bit, on the resolution a little bit, and obviously continue to improve those textures and include more of the foliage back in the game, include more of the visual effects. Because again, a lot of stuff was cut out, I think, just to make it run on Switch, and then they just left it at that and didn't do any optimizing. Glad to see some optimizing is now occurring, and I hope it continues to occur because The Outer Worlds is a really great game, and it should be a massively amazing experience on the go on Switch in the same way that The Witcher 3 is. But it needs a better porting studio, or it just needs a lot more work. It probably should have delayed its release um, until they were able to make it even better and more excitable on Switch. Because now, the reputation of it's kind of tainted. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe with a sale and a new patch coming, they're able to reinvigorate people to at least try the game. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode of, I guess, Prime News, right? Like, you might be wondering, is Prime News back? Are we getting Prime News daily? What's happening? I have no idea. Today, I just kind of felt inspired to make this. We're going to have other videos coming out today as well. Uh, be sure to check us out at Twitch at twitch.tv slash Nintendo Prime TV uh, because we will have a stream happening over there at some point today. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to get back into this. I know a little low energy. There's just, just a lot of news packed in there. Hopefully, some really high-quality editing that you guys enjoyed this beyond my usual scope uh, i want to thank you guys for everything and uh you know what subscribe or i'm gonna kick your dog have a good day everyone